If there's one thing I love most, it's complaining about award shows that do not affect my life in the slightest. A few days ago, everyone's favorite Crunchyroll Anime Awards released their nominations list for 2021, and as expected, just like the last few years, is it good? Is it bad? Well, it's complicated. This is by no means a malicious attack video on the Crunchyroll Awards, even back a few years ago when I made a video on their numerous much more severe problems back in the day that I'd like to mention they have since improved on. Even in that video, I was never really out to hate on the Crunchyroll Awards. I think it's great to have an award show where we can all come together and appreciate a medium, the people behind it, and even help give underappreciated shows a time in the sun. However, again, like every year, every year before it, there's always these really annoying, nagging things in these awards that I would love to just get in contact with some of these people behind the scenes and just ask them, did you really think this through here? Did you guys really intentionally design these awards around Jujutsu Kaisen being nominated for Anime of the Year after it already won Anime of the Year in 2021? And I guess that's the first place I want to start because what the hell, man? I get it. I get that you want to nominate these series while they're hot, while they're popular. You want Osama ranking in these awards now because a year from now, normies will have moved on. They probably won't even be thinking about it. I get it. And I'm sure it doesn't hurt that Crunchyroll just got streaming rights to Osama ranking and it's very easy to advertise an anime of the year contender, but... Does it really feel right nominating a series for anime of the year, or any category, before it's even complete? And beyond that, even if you are okay with that, do we really need to take up one of these six anime of the year slots with a series that won anime of the year last year? You did those votings at the tail end of the series airing, and because of that, nobody was voting for the first half of Jujutsu Kaisen. People were voting for that series as a whole. Essentially, what it boils down to is I think the awards would be a lot better structured if they just chose one path or the other. Either choose nominating these incomplete series, or wait until next year when the shows are actually finished and everyone has conclusive thoughts about them. I recommend that second one. I know that will never happen because of the reasons I laid out already, but if you want any kind of legitimacy as an award show, you're throwing it out the window when you have Jujutsu Kaisen flooding all of these categories, despite already flooding these categories last year. Another thing that really, really bothers me about these awards, I can't even remember if they did this last year, but I guarantee you if they did, I hated it just as much then, is this daily voting system they have. It turns out that putting one vote in for your categories is not enough for the crunch rolls anymore. No, no, no. You have to put your vote in every single day that these awards are online if you want to make the most out of your submission. I can't even fathom why this is a thing for these awards other than the fact that they just want to drive more traffic to their website and they want to keep this thing relevant for as long as possible. But again, when you do these sorts of things that completely go against the ethos of voting and awards, you lose more and more of that legitimacy as an actual awards ceremony. However, it wouldn't be a video complaining about an awards show if we didn't complain about the choices, about the nominations themselves. And I'm of two minds here, because in terms of actual choices among these categories, I actually think they did a pretty good job. This is maybe one of the best years for Crunchyroll nominations that I've personally seen. I mean, you're never ever going to please everybody when it comes to this stuff, but in terms of covering a diverse range of shows that I either personally can vouch are great or have heard great things about, this is a pretty solid list of categories. Barring one series which I feel is bizarrely robbed in this entire award show. Now again, I want to make it clear, I get that you can't please everybody with this stuff. Dyna Zenon, Vivi, ReZero, there's a lot of shows that I would have liked to see more of in these awards, but there's one in particular that really took me by surprise with how ignored it was 
in almost every single category. It's no secret that I am a fan of Mushoku Tensei. I reviewed the series weekly, I have released several standalone videos on it, I released one just yesterday actually, link in the description. And because I'm a fan of the series, it also means I'm not a stranger to the controversies and problematic discourse surrounding it. I get that from episode one, there were people who did not vibe with the way this story was set up. I get that there's questionable content and thematic material that makes a lot of people uncomfortable and even ignites arguments and tired, tired discourse. I get all of that, which is why I really, really hope that Mushoku being ignored in almost all of the awards here just happens to be a freak coincidence of nature? I mean, whether you like them or not, the Crunchyroll Awards are traditionally extremely normy. If there's a popular normy-friendly show that releases that year and most people like it, you can guarantee it's going to be spread all across their awards. If there's a popular normy-friendly character that most people really love, you can guarantee they're going to be spread all over their awards. So my question is, why is the most popular new anime series of 2021, one of the highest rated anime of 2021, one of the most discussed anime of 2021, one of the most beloved casts of 2021, why is this series that everyone knows about and most people really love, why is this only nominated in Best Animation and Best Fantasy Series? And why only Core 1? Crunchyroll does know that the second half of this series did come out this year, right? And even if it didn't, they wouldn't care? So what's going on here, man? I do have to reiterate again, for the millionth time, that I do understand that not everyone is going to have the same opinion about these things. I completely understand if somebody doesn't love Mushoku Tensei that much, but it just comes across extremely odd considering the general reception of the series and it contradicts years worth of the nominations they have traditionally put into these categories. Not even talking about anime of the year, I fully, fully believe that Mushoku Tensei deserved a spot in all of the character categories, the drama category, even the comedy category, and even if you have a problem with the show's story and characters, I'm struggling to see how it wouldn't belong in the best music, character designs, or direction categories either. This is a series that was lauded for its production. I just don't know, man. I don't know about all this. Best case scenario is somehow a jury of over 70 plus professionals all just didn't care enough to push for it. And worst case, something that I really don't want to believe is that there was an agenda behind not wanting to promote this series that happened to have controversial material that people didn't like. Overall, the Crunchyroll Awards seem pretty decent this year, but there's still more work to be done if they really want to make it as great as I think it can be. It's great to see more voice actor categories for each language, that's something that I was always really pushing for, but it would be really nice to take it a step further and acknowledge anime endeavors outside of Japan, like Link Click, one of the best anime series of 2021, and it also happens to be a Donghua series. There's a diverse range of selections in the nominations, but you're also crowding them with recycled and duplicate options. I mean, why the hell is Eren being nominated for both Best Protagonist and Best Antagonist? That literally makes no sense by the definition of those terms. There's a lot of weirdness, there's a lot of things that need to be improved, but just like I said in years past, I hope that they eventually get there and make this show something that feels worthy of the name Anime Awards. In the meantime though, and I, I promise this is not a sponsored shill, the community, the fans themselves have taken these things into their own hands and Reddit has had their own Anime Awards the past few years and it's genuinely what I consider about as good a system as you're going to get for nominating anime. They have essentially none of the issues that I mentioned here, their nominations list is extremely thorough and thought out, and they have a public and jury ranking system so that it's clear where the opinions actually are, something that I really, really think Crunchyroll could use. Also, extra bonus points from me and a special shout out to the R-Anime jury team for the fact that they actually got Voyager 
the greatest thing to ever exist in the history of mankind into these nominations. I love you guys. So if you're looking for an anime awards event, but you're too busy raging at the lack of whatever you liked in Crunchyrolls, I recommend going over there to check theirs. That's been all for me though guys, join the Discord if you want to chat about all things anime and complaining about awards. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video.